Hi everyone, uh, my name is Emily and I am from the University of Essex and I'm here today to talk to you about student finance. So what is student finance? Student finance is essentially the cost of going to university. Now this is made up of two main costs, which is your tuition fees, um, the fees for your, your academic learning essentially, um, and your living costs, which is often referred to as your maintenance. Um, so that's kind of everything that you need uh, to survive on. Um, just a quick note before we carry on, the information that I'm going to provide in this presentation um, is correct for students looking to enter and start their course in September or October 2021. Uh, the numbers don't vary much year on year, but just to make that clear from the outset. So when we're talking about student finance, uh, we often refer to the student loans company um, and they are kind of the company that provide the loans. Um, we will also hear um, about Student Finance England or Student Finance Wales. Um, and so as not to confuse you, um, although they are separate companies um, and kind of separate entities, um, they're not completely different. Um, so the student loans company is actually responsible for Student Finance or Student Student Finance England, sorry, or Student Finance Wales. Um, so they are kind of under the same umbrella, um, but to keep it general, we'll refer to the student loans company uh, throughout the session today. So in terms of support you get from the government then um, for your student loan, so you have student fee support, um, and this is your tuition fee loan. Um, that is the only tuition fee support that is available. Um, and for your maintenance support, so for your living cost support, this can be made up of your maintenance loan, as well as any scholarships and bursaries that you may be eligible for. And we'll cover that again uh, a little bit further into this session. So let's start, first of all, then with your tuition fees. So as I mentioned, your tuition fees are the cost of your course. Um, and this is usually a yearly fee. Um, and currently the maximum that that yearly fee can be is £9,250. Now that is for a full-time undergraduate course um, and is the, the current uh, fee for first year entry for 2021. It is possible um, that the course that you're undertaking will be less than this amount, but it's important to note that the amount of tuition fee loan that you will receive will be the exact amount of your tuition fee loan for that year. Um, and obviously, if the amount of for your course changes year on year, then the amount of loan that you will receive will also change year on year. Your tuition fee loan is available to all UK students um, that are on a full time undergraduate course. And your tuition fee loan is not income assessed, which means that it, all UK students are eligible uh, for a tuition fee loan. And as I mentioned, the loan will always cover the full fee for your course. Now, this part of the loan is paid directly to the university. Um, so you will not have to worry about making the payments for your tuition fee. The money will go directly to your university. Um, so that's not something you will have to worry about. And there's nothing that you will have to pay out of your own pocket um, before or during the course. Um, so you won't need to contribute until once you have graduated and you start the repayment um, side of things, which we will touch on at the end of this session. Moving on then to maintenance costs. Um, so as I've already mentioned, maintenance, um, we refer to quite a lot and it kind of generally means your living costs. Now this is usually your rent uh, or food or any books or equipment that you may need for your studies. Um, so it's, it's kind of your essentials really, everything that you need to get by on. And of course, where you go, where you study, um, and, and, and how you choose to spend your money um, kind of will affect your cost of living. Um, and so at this point, I will mention uh, a key word, which is budgeting, um, something that you will need to think about when you're a student in budgeting your money to make sure that you can afford um, your cost of living. So as I mentioned, um, the maintenance loan is available to all UK students on a full-time undergraduate course. Slightly differently from the tuition fee loan, the maintenance loan is paid directly to you as a student, and this is ordinarily in three instalments. Um, 
usually at the beginning of each term so you'll receive one installment at the beginning of the autumn term again in the spring and finally in the summer so you essentially when you're looking at your budgeting going to be looking at a term by term amount that you have to spend um, and working out you know how much you've got to spend on kind of each component of your of your living costs now how much you will get for your maintenance loan um, will depend on two factors um, so first of all your maintenance loan can be income assessed which means that they will look at your household income um, so for example if you're living at home they may look at your parents um, or guardians um, income um, or if you are an independent student, it might just be your income or yours and a partner's income. Um, but that's looked into to see how much um, money you would be eligible for. Likewise, depending on where you study may impact on how much money you are eligible for. So, for example, if you were studying in London, often the living costs are expected to be higher in London than if you were studying outside of London. And also, if you were to choose to remain living at home whilst you were a student, um, again, the amount that you will receive will be slightly different. Um, and that is usually less um, for if you're living at home, as expected, your living costs will be slightly lower. Uh, but we'll look at those numbers a little bit more closely in just a few moments. So how do you get your maintenance loan? Um, so one of the key things to remember is in order to be able to get your maintenance loan, uh, the first thing we need to do is to register at your university once you have secured a place. Um, you will not start receiving payments until you register. Um, and as I've mentioned already, budgeting is a key um, factor that you will need to think about and plan for when you're a student. The majority of universities will have lots of support uh, and advice for budgeting um, from the university or your student's union. Um, so it's, it's kind of worth doing your research and planning your finances. You know, you don't want to spend all of your student loan in the first few weeks and then find that you've got next nothing to live on for the remaining eight to 10 weeks of your term. Um, it's also worthwhile thinking about student discounts. Um, a lot of companies and businesses offer student discounts. Um, so it's worth taking a look at what kind of things you're eligible for and making sure you are kind of accessing everything that you can. Similarly, um, a lot of universities, certainly at Essex, we offer a hardship fund. Um, so should any student find themselves in real financial difficulty during their time with us, um, then they can come with us and apply potentially um, for our hardship fund, where we will look to support you through any financial difficulty um, that you are having. Um, so worth bearing that in mind as well. So back to the maintenance loan then, and perhaps how much you may or may not receive. So I mentioned briefly about income, uh, household income assessment. This is quite a key part of the application. Um, and this is the key part that the government will look at to decide how much you may be eligible for. So the maintenance loan is made up of kind of two parts, um, a non-income assessed part and an income assessed part. So if you are applying for income assessed um, part of the loan, then they will take into consideration your household income. So any household um, income that is below £25,000, um, then you would likely receive the maximum amount of student loan, uh, sorry, maintenance loan. Um, but likewise, at the other end of the spectrum, if your household income is over the threshold, um, then you will likely only receive the non-income assessed part of the loan. Now this, this household income threshold or limit is different depending on where you are planning to study. So for example, if you are planning to study in London, um, then the household income threshold um, is, is much higher at £70,004. If you're planning to stay at home um, whilst you are studying at university, um, then that threshold is slightly lower at 58220 um, so it's worth bearing that in mind um, when you are looking to make your application and to kind of get a guide as to how much you are expecting to receive. Um, those thresholds um, will be relevant um, to look into. So in order for the government or for the student loans company um, to do this, there will be a separate part of the application um, that your parent or guardian um, will be able to fill in to provide this information. Any information that's provided um, will be verified by HMRC 
um, using internet, uh, sorry, using national insurance numbers. Um, and if they require any further evidence, then they will be in contact um, with usually a nice and easy way for them to provide any extra evidence they need um, in order for them to make the correct decision about how much money you are eligible for. And on that note, if we take a look at some numbers in terms of what you may or may not be eligible for for your maintenance loan. So as I mentioned, um, it's split into two sections. We have a non-income assessed section, um, which all students will be eligible for regardless of household income. So that is the minimum amount all students will receive. If you then also receive income assessed part of the loan, you can receive up to the amount in the second column. Um, and if you add those together, it gives you a maximum total that you can see on the far right. So for example, if you are living away from home, that's studying outside of London and your household income is above the threshold, then you would only receive the minimum amount of 4,422. Now, if you are studying and living in that way, but your household income is um, below 25,000 pound per, per year, then you would also receive the 5,066, which is the maximum income assessed. Now that would give you a total of 9,488 for the year, uh, which is then split across three installments. Now, of course, you can receive different amounts between the minimum and the maximum. So it's not, you know, you get the minimum or the maximum, um, obviously depending on, on your income, household income, um, will vary on how much you receive. So you essentially would receive anything between 4,422 and 9,488 if you are living away from home outside of London. Now, as you can see, the prices for being in London or remaining at home are slightly different. Um, and again, as I've mentioned before, that is to do with the expected living costs um, being higher in London or lower if you are living at home. So you can see that the minimum amount that you could receive if you are studying in London is 6,166. And the maximum takes you up to 12,382 if you are gonna be in London. And the slightly, low, slow, slightly lower amount for home, uh, the minimum amount being 3,516. Um, and then you could get anything up to the maximum of 7,987. Those amounts, as I mentioned, are for the year and would then be split into three installments, usually equal installments uh, that you would, you would receive at the beginning of each term. So that gives you an idea on the numbers. Now, in addition to this, there are some courses um, that are slightly longer than the standard courses. Now, this tends to be health courses in particular. So if you are studying nursing, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, uh, or similar courses like this, then your courses are often a little bit longer, which means you will study for more weeks of the year. So the courses that fall into this category are courses that have longer than 33 weeks of learning. Um, and if you fall into this category, you may be eligible for a longer courses maintenance loan. Now, this means that you would be entitled to some additional money per week for the extra weeks that you study. So if you think you may be in this category, and it's worth kind of finding out if you are eligible for this additional part of the loan, because if you are, um, there are differing amounts that you can receive. Um, again, this is income assessed. Um, and these numbers here are the maximum amount that you could receive per week for the additional weeks that you are expected to study for your course. And again, it differs depending on where you are living and studying. Um, so if you are staying at home, then that number will be slightly lower. It's a maximum £65 per week. It's living and studying in London, um, but not with your parents, up to a maximum of £127 per week. And then if you're outside of London and living away from home it would be £99 per week. So if you are eligible, this is not something you'd want to miss out on. So do make sure you look into this um, before making your application. Now, as I have mentioned previously, your maintenance support can also be made up with your scholarship and bursaries that may be uh, accessible for you. So these are essentially additional non-repayable support that can be offered to you from your university. Um, and there are often a wide variety of awards that are available, all of which will have different eligibility criteria attached to them. So 
different institutions will have different um, offerings and different criteria. So for each institution you're looking to go to or apply to, it's worth looking into what scholarships and bursaries they have available, which ones that you could apply for or that you would be eligible for, um, because they're not something you would want to miss out on. A key thing to think about when looking at scholarships and bursaries is that some of them you may need to apply for separately um, before you start at university. Um, others you might be automatically assigned to. So it's worthwhile looking into whether you need to do an application and if you do need to do an application when you need to do that by. Um, so again, worth doing some, some research. In terms of Essex, um, certainly for our 2021 intake, some examples of the scholarships and bursaries that we do have on offer, you can see on the screen here. So we have sports scholarships and bursaries. This is something a lot of universities are able to offer. So if you are very invo involved in sport or want to be involved in competitive sport, ex for example, um, this may be something that you are eligible for. Uh, we also have a schools membership plus bursary. Um, so we have a group of schools that are local to us um, in Essex. Um, and if you are a member of our scheme, then any students coming from those schools are eligible for a bursary. Um, so if you think you may be in one of those schools, it's worthwhile looking into this. Uh, we also offer scholarships based on um, the kind of level of qualification you receive. So, for example, here, if you was to um, score highly in your international baccalaureate, you might be eligible for our excellent scholarship. Um, and that usually has a kind of grade level that you would be expected to meet in order to qualify for that scholarship. A few others there, we have a 6 6 bursary um, and a care leavers bursary. Um, I say there's, this is not by any means a full list. Uh, there's usually a wide variety available. Uh, there's a website on there that you can see at the bottom of the screen there, um, which has all of our fees and funding support. It also has a search function, so you can pop in your details, the level you're going to be studying, uh, which subject area you're studying in, and it will bring up any scholarships or bursaries that you may or may not be eligible for. And it's possible other universities will have a similar kind of service, so it's worthwhile looking into this. So the application itself, um, the easiest way to apply for your uh, student loan is through the government website, which is the top link that you can see on the screen there. They also have a lot of good guidance um, for you filling in the application as well. And as I mentioned before as well, there are a couple of different sections for your application. There's a section that you will fill in as the applicant, which will be your personal details, um, as well as where you are planning on studying and your courses. There's also a section for the guardian or parent to complete. Now this will be for them to input their household income information for that part of the assessment. Um, and then the government and the student loans company will take that information and then that's how they will calculate how much money you'll be eligible for. It's worth noting at this stage um, that the applications for students starting in, in September, October, 2021 opens in March, 2021 this year. Um, so we've got a little bit of time um, at the moment, uh, but it's worthwhile doing your research into different areas that you might be eligible for, certainly in terms of your maintenance support um, in the run up to that date. Next, I wanted to talk about repayments. Now, this is an area that has a, usually has a lot of myths and misconceptions um, around it um, and, and often is a put off for students in having a student loan. One of the first things I think it's important for you to remember is that this is not a normal loan. So you will not be immediately asked to start making repayments as soon as you have graduated or as soon as you take out your loan. So once you have graduated, you will actually not make any repayments until at least the April after you have graduated. Um, so if you graduate, for example, if you were graduating in the July of this year, you would not make any re repayment at all, no matter what, until the following April. Now, even when you get to that April, it may be the case that you will still continue not to make any repayments. And that would be if you are below the threshold, earning threshold in your salary. So if you are earning less than £26,575 per year, it's likely that you will not make any repayments to your student loan yet. Once you are earning that amount or higher, then you will then start to make repayments. Um, but this is done in an affordable way, which we'll come on to in just a moment. But in terms of the threshold and whether or not you're making payments, 
So as I say, once you're over the threshold, you will make payments. But for example, if you was to change jobs um, or for any other reason your salary was to dip below the threshold, then you would automatically stop making payments. So it's not once you've met the threshold, you will always make repayments. If you were to meet the threshold and then drop back below, then you would start, but then stop again making repayments. So it's worth remembering that as well. So how do they decide how much you have to repay? Um, your repayment figure is a combination of your tuition fee loan and your maintenance loan, as well as any interest you've accrued across all of the years that you were studying, which could be three, four, five years, depending on the length of your course. And the repayments are set at around 9% of anything that you earn over the threshold. And it's money that's taken automatically from your salary. So once you're earning over that threshold um, of the 26,000 that we mentioned before, um, then they will automatically take 9% of your earnings as payments towards your student loan. Now, obviously, because it's done by percentage, the more that you earn, then the more that you will pay off per month. So to give you a kind of an idea on these figures, um, I've got kind of a rough guide of some monthly repayments here. Um, but as I say, it will be dependent on your specific salary amount before tax. So as you can see here, if you're under the threshold, you won't make any monthly repayments. If you're just over the threshold and looking and earning around 28,000 pounds, then you'd only be paying about 10 pound a month back towards your loan. As you start to increase, um, for example, if you get up to 34,000 pounds per year for your annual salary, then you'll likely be paying slightly more at 55 pounds per month. But obviously in relation to your salary income, the percentage is still 9%. Um, so it's, it's done in an affordable way um, and you'll never be paying back any higher than that percentage. Another key thing to remember as well is that you will only ever be paying off your student loan for a maximum of 30 years. So once you get to that 30 years after you have graduated, if you still have any student loan outstanding that you have not been able to pay back, that outstanding amount is written off. So you will only ever pay a maximum, pay for a maximum of 30 years. Now, obviously, the more that you earn, the more of it you will pay off, um, and the less that you earn, like likewise, the less you will pay off across that 30 years. But anything that is outstanding does get written off. So in terms of interest rates, as I mentioned before, um, you will start accruing interest on your loan as soon as you start your course, which is essentially as soon as you take out your loan. Once you've graduated, then the interest rates can vary. So they're set whilst you are studying at a certain level. And then once you have graduated and you're starting to make repayments, the interest amount can vary. So for example, as you can see here, whilst you're studying, um, the interest rate is RPI, which is retail price index, um, more commonly known as kind of a cost of living inflation, um, plus 3% of the amount. Um, and then once you've graduated, if you are below the threshold, it would only ever um, accrue interest at the cost of living inflation. Um, and then as you earn more, it will be the cost of living inflation up to a maximum of plus 3%. So the more you're earning, the more interest you accrue, the more you pay back, the less you earn, the less you pay back per month and the less interest you earn. So it's always done based on how much you're earning and therefore how much you can afford to pay back on your loan. So a few other key bits of information that I think would be useful for you guys to be aware of um, and, and kind of myth bust, myth bust um, some of the rumors that you might hear about. And as I mentioned, because your student loan is not a standard loan, it does not um, play a factor in your credit rating. So if you have a student loan, it is not going to bring your credit rating down. Likewise, if you're looking to get a mortgage to buy a house after you've graduated, um, it's unlikely that your student loan um, will affect your ability to do this. Um, it's, a, it's a separate loan. It's treated entirely separately. Um, another key thing as well. Um, so if you are planning to move abroad um, to continue um, to, to study or to live, um, then you will be expected to continue to make repayments on your student loan. By moving out of the country, um, it does not mean the loan will go away. So do make sure you remember that. In terms of repayments, 
Um, these are based entirely on your earnings as a graduate, and that is just your personal earnings. Um, once you are expected to make repayments, um, household income is not taken into consideration. It's your personal earnings um, and it's not based on how much you borrow. So if you borrowed more, it does not mean that your repayments will be higher than someone who has borrowed less. Um, it's done based on your earnings and how much you can afford to repay. As you would have seen throughout the numbers that I shared, um, there's usually a lower amount offered for students that are living at home. But it's worthwhile remembering that it's not necessarily always cheapest to live at home. For example, if you're living at home but have to travel or commute a fair distance to attend your classes and lectures, then it may not always be the cheapest option. So you do need to think about um, that in terms of how much money you're going to receive and how much it's going to cost you to get to university to attend your classes um, whilst you're living at home. Also, when you're looking at repayments, um, you can make early repayments for your student loan and there's no penalty for this. So if you would like to pay back your student loan faster than the amount that the government automatically takes, um, then you are able to do this. But I would recommend that you consider whether it's the most convenient and the right option for you. Um, let's say the repayments kind of system is set out to be affordable um, and you would need to be kind of confident that you could definitely afford to make higher repayments. Um, but it is possible to do if that's something that you would be interested in. So I've got a few links here um, of websites that you guys might find useful in terms of finding out more information and about how the application process works. Um, so as I have posted already, I think within the session is the government website, which is the top link you can see there. They have lots of great information as well as being the place where you will make your application and they have a guide um, to help you through the application process as well. Uh, it's a great website there to kind of give you some more advice and information about the student loan repayments, um, if that's something that you are concerned about. And as I mentioned as well, all universities will have their own kind of student finance support resources available. Um, and at the University of Essex, we do as well. And that's the bottom link that I popped on the screen there. Um, so if you are looking for some additional support and advice, um, I would recommend checking that out. So as I mentioned, um, I'm from the University of Essex. Um, and if you are interested in studying at Essex um, or interested in any other support available that we have, we've got all of our website and socials information there that you can check us out. Also on there, I've popped an email, our admissions email. So if you have any questions about student finance or admissions to the University of Essex in general, please do get in contact with us. And I've also popped a QR code there, which you could scan with a camera on your phone. Um, if you would like to be kept in contact with the University of Essex, um, any upcoming events that we've got or support available for applicants. Um, so if you're interested in that, please do scan and fill in the session. But I hope that's been useful for you guys. If you do have any questions, um, do please get in contact with us and we will do our best to offer you any advice that we can. Thank you.